everybody, and welcome to Stardom Review. I am your co-host, Andre, two-thirds, Andre C. And right over here, we have our co-host, the wonderful, the ever effervescent Princess Melball. How you doing, Melball? And I'm doing pretty okay. I'm pretty happy that I managed to throw this together, because let me tell you, my energy levels just weren't there. I had an awesome vacation where I got to organize stuff for Astrid, and then I immediately got a tattoo, and then immediately after that went on my own vacation, which if you know with my parents is not really a vacation, it's just a number of days of organized hikes. Looks like lots of drinking. You're, you're, you're drinking. We did drink a lot of Prosecco yeah. in the evening. It was glorious. There you go. Prosecco. Prosecco. I did drive Prosecco. home today, though, So, and I didn't wow. stop driving home. So, so you're still the girl's a little tired. <laughs> what? You said you didn't stop, so you're still driving home? <laughs> yeah, in my mind, I feel like I am. I didn't stop. I just came right home. I get I'm that. tired. I get that. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, good day at work. Work's actually been really, I've really, my job is they're giving me more responsibilities. Uh, they're mm-hmm. putting me on the forklift and I'm picking orders. So I'm happy. It, it's, it's nice to do some. Again, I used to drive forklift at my old job and pick orders. So that just the new job, they had a bunch of people. And again, I'm just being slotted into other positions, which I'm really enjoying. So uh, it, it, the, days, the days seem to go by a lot faster when you get new things to do at your job. Of course, of course. And when you're a little happier doing those tasks than the other ones. Sure. Oh, I'm happy doing my old tasks. That's good. Yeah. No, it's not been doing the other tasks, but, you know, just it's just nice to change it up. So it, it's, been, it's been a good week. Uh, I watched some incredible professional wrestling this week. I watched them, we watched a stardom. I, was, I watched mm-hmm. a couple matches from the Blue Justice event from New Japan. Watched a couple matches from uh, Mari Gold this past sun, uh, Monday. So. I was actually just watching Nelba before coming on here. There you go. See? Uh-huh. See? We're, we're, we're expanding our horizons. I'm just sticking with What about this Daga guy? I was just watching a match with him on Noah. And when I tell you, I'm like, whew, why haven't I heard of this guy before? He is good. Yeah, Mr. Xena. <laughs> Clearly, the uh, based on what I just saw, very much an influence into her current style. We'll say not, transition. Edition. Not on the show we're about to talk to about it. What she was. Yeah. Well, but, mm, when we say that she is a Swiss Army knife of of wrestling, maybe. Yeah, but uh, in the match she was in. Hmm, 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 hmm. We'll talk about that. So we're before we do that, before we start talking some stardom uh Nagoya Golden fight, uh, we want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in to us, whether it's Andre Melba Wrestling Talk, whether it's Backbreaker Video or it's on A Plus Productions in audio form. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in, listening to us. Which we really appreciate it. We just love talking professional wrestling and we love talking about it for you guys. Um so if you are listening on A Plus Production, thank you so very much. And if you do want to check us out in audio form, aplusproductions.com, or you can hit up the sports feed, the entertainment feed, or where you can find us over on the A Plus Wrestling feed, or you can and you can check join the group over at A Plus Productions on Facebook. Check us out over there. Lots of good chat going on in there. I slammed uh, the Oilers in that chat the other day. Somebody so. And I and I'm I'm from the and I live in the entertainer and I slam the others in there because yeah, I'm just not a other fan. <laughs> Sorry, Jason. Of, I was gonna say for the sake of our friendship, I love you, Jason. <laughs> Uh, but, and then thank you to all y'all watching on the YouTube, whether it's a backbreaker video or Andre Miller's talk. Thank you so very much for all the great support. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below because that's where we really, really want to hear from you if, on the YouTube side. Hit the comments, we, whether it's backbreaker or our Andre Miller wrestling talk. Talk to us. We want to hear. We want to hear what you loved about the shows we're talking about uh, and what other wrestling you're watching in the world. We love to talk about it. So. Uh, just let us know there. Uh, please share us out to your friends, family, and uh, people that like to wear hockey masks. And don't forget to uh, uh, hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. 
Ding dong. Dun dun dun. Hello. You should have done the like. Chee -chee -chee. I really should have. Didn't you really? think? You know what? We can try again. We'll do it at the end of the show. Get us. <laughs> I, I won't remember at that point. Hopefully I'll probably have both it. of our ADHD doesn't fail us at this point. I'll, I'll have a whole new a whole new thing come at, at the end. I, I guarantee you it. Based on whatever debauchery we talk about, yeah. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. I did not load up the slides. <laughs> there we go. Boom, yeah. There Ooh. it is. I'm going to bring us back to our normal slides. We're here talking about stardom. Uh, Nagoya Golden Fight from uh, October 5th. Uh, it was a little, about a week ago now, almost a week ago, as this comes out on mm -hmm. Friday. Uh, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. incredible show. I was very much looking forward to it. Uh, four, four title matches on this show. Uh, just heck of a card. Uh, it did mm -hmm. kick off with a on the pre-show that neither myself or Mel watched because we both forgot about it. Um, it was a pre-show five-way high-speed title contendership battle royal that Yuna Mizumori won. So we're getting Yuna Mizumori versus May Sarah for the high-speed title. Both of us were wrong on that. I think did we call Kaguma. Oh, I'm yeah. happy to be wrong about that. I uh, I think I had you had said you wanted and you thought Koguma was going to, or you said you wanted Rana to win, but you thought Koguma was going to win. I said I mm -hmm. wanted Ko Momokogo to win, but I thought Koguma, but I thought Koguma was going to get the win. I think mm -hmm. we were both in the Koguma mm -hmm. train. That we not who we wanted, but who we thought. But yeah, you know, Mrs. Mori getting a title shot. That is a pleasant surprise. Mm -hmm. Yes, I managed to not be spoiled by the results of any of this still till this very moment. I have been very selective with my social media usage in the last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. It's, it's, honestly, the only match I got spoiled for me on this show is the IWGP Women's Championship. And that's just because I went to, I was surfing through Mina Shirakawa's Twitter page and she shared some stuff. So that yeah, screwed me up. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair that's fair i managed to stay off of the the x thing for a while yeah yeah so that's my only one uh so on the... you made me go freaking viral on there sir sir rude you're welcome you're welcome uh <laughs> so we uh we actually had english commentary on this show which i mm -hmm. i think i heard from t no i i didn't i watched the last three matches with japanese commentary because we did purchase the pay-per-view version in english commentary and we mm -hmm. found out tuesday it was off the service and so i had to go watch the last three matches um in japanese because it didn't drop on stardom world till wednesday evening and i just wanted to get everything watched on tuesday so we had walk new japan's walker stewart <laughs> and uh Guy who works backstage for uh, Stardom, uh, and actually works. Uh, I can't remember. He's uh, Tom 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 Fain. He also works. He also has his own site reporting on professional wrestling too. Uh, he works backstage for the English side of Stardom, uh, and Walker Stewart on the call. And I really thought these two gelled really well together and did a really good job. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Um, I this was their first time kind of calling together too, wasn't it? As far as I, as far as I apparent. know, yeah. As far as I know, it, was, it didn't come off like that at all. It just kind of came off as, as two very professional friends sitting there and talking about professional wrestling, especially in the last couple of matches where they added Ms. Waka to the uh, commentary crew. It was a very interesting and fun little bit of banter back and forth between the two, and then subsequently three of them. Oh, there you go. So we're going to jump in. We're going to jump into the main car, kicking it off with the uh, future of Stardom Championship. It is Rina versus Miyu Amasaki. And we found out a great little note during uh, Miyu's entrance. Walker Stewart and Miyu Amasaki have the same birthday in the same year. They're both 22 years old. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, it, it's so weird to find someone like that, though, right? And it's very rare in your like lifespan that you do find someone like that. Yeah, but mind you, I managed to find one in Mrs. Money Munson. There you go. Yeah, crazy. My, my great aunt had the same birthday as me. 
That's not what I know. I don't think she was born the same year, though. No, 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 no. Many years before. Me. <laughs> yeah. Actually, my coworker has the same you? birthday as me, but he was he's like 50 something, almost 60. So, yeah. <laughs> Take us into yeah. the match. Sir. I thought really good match. I thought these two really flowed well together. Uh, Miu coming like like Rina tossing her around early on by the hair, really getting the advantage, beating her up. Miu fighting back with these really good uh, forearms to the chest. But Rina had mm -hmm. that really good looking boot. Uh, there's, there's a great X factor coming out of the corner by Miu because she like hop up in the second, mm -hmm. like jumped out, like spinning out into the X factor. It looked really good. Uh, I kind mm -hmm. of almost Z, almost if you look at the look, I haven't seen Z factor ish, but off the second, like swinging around, like uh, Zoe mm -hmm. Sager does the Z factor. Yeah, I really like that. Um, and Mia at one point gets a huge running back elbow to uh, to drop uh, Rena for two. Then she gets a rings of Saturn, but uh, Rena fights her way to the rose. That rings of Saturn looks really good the way she does it, like because she's laying back in it. It's almost like. She's like, it's almost, it almost looks like Rena's pinning her, but her arms are being torqued backwards. I really like that. Mm -hmm. And the head being, hold on. <laughs> yeah. Um, Rena reverses that, uh, the Tensei, which is that sit out pedigree that she does into a really nice octopus hole. But Mia fights and fights. She eventually gets the foot on the bottom rope. Um, really good back and forth out with these two. Uh, Mio goes for the Tensei again, but Arena kicks out at the and she hits it, but Arena kicks out at that last like 2.999. Um, she does hit a hammer, the she hits a soup, uh, a soup, uh, DDT's Arena off the top when they were fighting up top, and she hits a hammer lock DDT, but Arena again kicks out at 2.999. The finish comes. Uh, Arena gets the backslide into a jackknife cover for two. Uh, then hits that modified crucifix driver, but she only gets two again. Uh, Mio comes back with that pendulum DDT, then does a cradle spike DDT, and then mm -hmm. follows it up, hitting Tensei, which is a sit out pedigree. And we have a new future of stardom champion. Yeah. Let me tell you, she earned it in this match i've been humming and hawing on me still but man the immense progress and improvement she has made just over the last month has been just insane um i love this match this was so good it was so fast-paced they they flowed effortlessly together it was so good and there was so much that Miyu clearly studied from Rina that she had an answer for. There were so many reversals in this from Miyu that we don't typically see out of her in matches that go this long. Like usually her time in there, she spent doing the moves and not reversing the moves being done on her. So this was a really, really impressive match for me, specifically for Miyu. Um, yeah. That's all I kind of got to add to that. You kind of got everything I said. Her DDTs were freaking killer in this one. They were. So post-match, uh, uh, Amasaki says, Rina, what is this belt? It's so heavy. I can't believe I've had to wear this heavy belt for so long. And 13 times. To, this makes no sense to me. Uh, I mean, I'm going to make it even heavy. Oh, I can't imagine. But for now, I'm going to make it even heavier. Just talking about the P. It's just the wording. She would translate. Make, she's, <laughs> I can't believe people have had to he hold this heavy belt for so long. 13 different people, too. Uh, I'm really. And Rena, Rena says, I'm really frustrated. That belt suits you so well. But I won't let you run away with the victory. So even if it's not for that belt, you should definitely let me have a singles match again. Uh, Amazaki then fought. It follows up with, I debuted as Stardom Supernova, and I have worked hard to get this belt, and I think I've fulfilled my role as a Supernova. I will continue to grow together with this belt. So happy. So oh, yeah. happy. It sucks to see Arena step away from the future title belt, but I feel this is also a positive thing, mm -hmm. because this, to me is a graduation for Rena. I expect to see the next title that she go after being not the future. Yeah. Like I actually expect to see her potentially going after the artist of Sardom championships. I would like to see hate do that since hey. the singles gold doesn't seem to be feasible for them at the hey. moment at this point in the show. 
Yeah, and she still has that new blood tag title that she holds with uh, Naba. So there's there's still that for her too. But again, the new blood mm-hmm. tag titles are really old. I think they've only maybe been once or twice been contested outside of the new blood shows. Maybe once or twice. I can't mm-hmm. remember. It's, it's been very few. I know once for have. certain. I'm not sure on the second. Yeah, once, maybe twice. I know they did once, but like maybe twice they've had that mm-hmm. uh, title switch. But yeah. So we move on to another match on this show. It is it is Saya Kamatani versus Sayaka Kurara. 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 Kurara getting that upset victory just a couple of weeks ago against Saya Kamatani in the multi woman tag match that they that they had. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is a it's a revenge match for Saya Kamatani, and oh boy. Did she get some serious revenge in this match? Because she kicked the shit out of Kurara, man. Oh, Mm -hmm. dude, she, like, the kicks she landed in, man, took her to the outside, whipping her into the chair. She was just going off on this little girl. She got the hate haze welcoming, is what Mm -hmm. I felt like. I think that's an appropriate terminology for that. Yeah, so Kamatani hitting some of her greatest hits at Springboard Cross, those, those draw, that the shotgun drop kicks that she does are just so good. Yeah, yeah. Those- they were stiff. This one too, she was pulling her in really close for those, and then just fully extending her into the corner. It was mental. Yeah, some of those spin kicks that she was hit were just lethal. But Karara did get some good offense here. She ducked a spin kick at one point to get a sleeper on and on mm-hmm. Kamatani and really fights to keep her at center, but Kamatani fighting and getting using those long limbs to get to the ropes. Um, there was a great spot. Uh, Karara hits a beautiful looking acid drop at one point so that where she gets the cutter mm-hmm. in the corner. Look, I was like, oh yeah. And I think and then uh Kura actually, just before that, hit a small packet uh, off of a Star Crusher attempt, and she ended up getting a spear uh, also yeah. in there. Yeah. Her spears so, so. are really, really good, because she can just land and pounce right into it just like that. That's one thing that she's very, very quick at. Uh, there's a, it's, it's very much reminiscent of the of uh, Kodobushi's Kamagoye, but Kamatani does it with just a straight boot. She has both feet, both hands, and she has somebody in the head as they, she pulls them in. That just looks rough. Um, so mean. The end of this match still comes. Kurara's unloading forearms on Kamatani, but Kamatani comes back with a huge pump kick. Then another. She only gets one. So then Kurara gets her into that roll arounding pin thing, but she mm-hmm. can't get the win there. Kamatani hits this hu- another huge pump kick, hits a roundhouse kick to the head. Then that uh, tornado kick, like the jumping in the air and spinning around tornado, or if you're if you're a North American fan, uh, her Karushita's katana move, where she comes down, kicking the person down on the mat. You used to have me a video of some of somebody doing it at GCW, doing the same move. I don't even know who it was, but it was insane. Definitely knocked the poor kid out. Yo, dude, that was sick. But yeah, uh, she <laughs> hits that uh, tornado kick. That tornado kick to Karara, da- who's down, and she falls up with a star crusher, which is a fisherman driver for the win. Again, I thought Karara looked super strong in her comebacks, but Kamatani looked insanely dominant throughout. I'd say almost feral. She was just bent on on vengeance against poor Kurara. And holy hot diggity. She got it. Um, I don't have a whole lot to add to that. I kind of jumped in where I could because I didn't take a whole lot of notes in this because I was just pr- pretty much just sitting there going, oh, 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 oh. This was so rough. Poor Kurara. She, they, again, the hate hazing. Um, and I don't feel that this was the first. Well, this was the first time it happened. No. I would say Rena tried it on me. Mm-hmm. It was just not as successful. Yeah. Um, this was the second hazing of the night, and it was more successful in hate's favor. More hazing throughout the night. It was crazy. Um, but this was a phenomenal. I was gonna say it's a hate, hate hazing. Thing. No, it's a hate zing. That just sounds German, though. <laughs> it's, it's a hate, hate zing. zing. It's just a hate zing. Um, no, <laughs> hate hazing. I tried. Um, yeah, 
This was a really, really great match. It was a really, really good show off for Kurara. Yes, she got her butt beat a lot of this, but again, as you said, her comebacks were very solid. And Kamatani is a phenomenal person to to wrestle in the fact that she gives as much to her opponent as she takes for herself. Yeah. So from a really great match from a young competitor and an absolute superstar veteran to my favorite team in Empress Nexus Venus, the entirety of Empress Nexus Venus, going up against the evil alliance of hate, Konami, Momo Watanabe, Atsuya Katara, and Raka, teaming up with Zap and the person they that, who I, I just finished the first episode of Queen of Villains. It's a really good series. But I, awesome. I don't want to see Dump Matsumoto in 2024. Holy balls. I'm not even going to go through this match. This match sucked. Like, uh, I got to pull it up. Uh, I have the rating. So on cage match, out of 21 votes, people voting the the uh, their level of what they thought of the show, 1.73 out of 10 for this match. Ooh. Yikes. Like, you know? I, I gotta like watching the show, and it's not a, it's not a it's like one of those like fictionalized versions of history. Uh, you know, with like some of the some mm-hmm. some biopics they do, like it's not everything happened the way it all it all says, but it you it follows the point of their life. I like I, just after watching the first episode of Queen of Villains, I have a lot of more respect. To, I would still respect Dumb Matt's Wonder for everything she did in her past. Mm-hmm. And I have more respect for her watch, just watching and learning her, some of the history of her family and, and the shitty life that she came from. But I still don't want to watch her in 2024. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you did you take any notes on this one, my oh, friend? I took a lot of notes, and I just decided I'm not t- – it is it is hate beating the shit out of EXV. Uh, Dump Matsumoto just keeps cracking everybody with a kendo stick. Everybody just hitting people with weapons, and uh, EXV keeps trying to save people. Mina took a beating throughout the majority of the match, and then Waki gets tagged in, even though, why was EXV tagging when none of the Evil Alliance was tagging? They were all just in the ring doing whatever the hell they wanted. Uh, the, the, was- there was one point where there was some semblance of organization, but at no point in time, this is very important because we said this was going to happen. At no point in time, once Dump got in the ring, did she frack and leave it. Because she couldn't. <laughs> oh. And Zap just sat there with her. <laughs> and it was... <laughs> Look, the entrances were the best part of this show. Because I loved EXV all coming out, like coming out the six of them on the stage. And then they all yeah. came down in pairs. You had Micah coming down with Amina. Then you had uh, Waka and or was it Waka and Zena came down together, and then Hanako and Rian came down together. It was just a nice little flow. And then even Heath entrance was great. And then dumping Zap coming out, and then they walk down to the ring, and everybody's at the ring, and Dump is barely off the ramp part, like she is walking so slow. Because again, bad knees, bad back. I understand. I'm not again no mm-hmm. not slamming her for for no. For the- the physicality she's taken, but again, if you're this worn down, why are you, why are you doing this? Like, take take the man, be at ringside by all means. Uh, hit people with the kendo stick by all means when they're outside the ring. Be a manager, be a hangman girl, yell at people, swear at people. But, like, why did the ring announcer need to be caned? Dude, dude, they, she on her way to the ring, she smacked Walker in Tom's desk. Then she went over to the Japanese commentary and smacked the dude on the head with the kendo stick. The, the, the you commentary. She bonked Walker and he stood up? No, no. Be the one she, person who she her. just missed Walker. Like, she slapped the table right beside right. Walker and he, and Tom's like, what did you do to her? What did you do? It's what Tom is yelling <laughs> to that Walker. And it was, geez. Which is hilarious because at that point, 
And Walker was the only one talking positively about her. And Tom was talking about how terrified of her he was. Oh, again, it was insane. And then she walked over to Japanese and just bonked the dude on the head with the kendo stick. I was just, yeah. and then just, this match was absolute shit. Like Mina and Waka trying to do everything they could. Oh, and poor Rhea. Rihanna at the beginning there also oh. got sacrificed to dump, and she kind of got a bit of a pinata beating for a bit there. Poor thing. Yeah, like dude, it was this whole thing was just, just a sh just shit. Um, at the end of the match, Waka does try to get a comeback, starts going after everybody, but then she just gets kendoed down, and I think she got kendoed by Zap here, and then. Dump comes over and starts kindling her more. Uh, they all hit, smack her around, and then Waka hits her with the metal garbage can. So does Dump. Uh, and Tora hits a Death Valley bomb for the win. And then they beat the shit out of EXV more after the match. And then Natsuki yeah. Tora gets the mic and goes, hey, guys, hey you guys, are you watching uh, in direct translations at Evil Queen, but Queen of, Queen of Villains, uh, Dump, and Zap. Nagoya is a waste. On October 27th at Core Q and Hall, we will go on a rampage again with this evil alliance. Until then, you guys sleep in fear. So we're getting evil alliance again on the 27th. Shit. <sighs> the marketer in me wants to say this is brilliant because it is. But the fan in me says, again, stay on the outside. Cane people on the outside. Yell orders at, at hate and zap. And and there's a third person who came along with them once, wasn't there? Yeah, I just don't remember who they are. That was a, that was bring, a bring them back. I don't mind that. Yeah. Um, this... Because, yeah, at the beginning, they, they barely even, they hadn't even gotten to the ring and started the, the match. And they were yeeting people into the chairs. And then they sacrificed Rianne, who got, you know, again, mercilessly beaten by Dump for quite some time. And then Mina got sacrificed. And it was just move after move after move after move after move after move. It was crazy. Um, there was a camel clutch drop kick. That Konami and Momo did mm. on Mina, which despite it was on Mina, it was it looks really, really good. And especially with Konami being the one kicking, it just it's so brutal. Um there was the uh the spinning back fish though that Mina hit on Momo that would just landed so perfectly, so solidly, and Momo dropped like a sack of potatoes. It was really, really good. Um, I did love that when Xena and Amco were actually able to get into the ring, um, that they were able to obliterate, uh, Momo, Ruaka, and Konami, um, you know, doing that little run back and forth through the corners. I don't know what to call it because they were just kind of running and maybe, maybe the lariat closing, running close line. I don't know. The arms were out. There was bodies colliding. It was glorious, glorious chaos. Um, that was when I noticed that Zap and Dump, during this time, while Hanako and Xena were beating the crap out of those three, that Zap and Dump were just standing in the corner, like, watching it all unfold. And I was like, um, this is are terrible. we just taking, are we taking a breather? Like, that's your team. Mm -hmm. You could do some assistance. I don't know. Um, yeah. uh, I a few questions. Well, I can't, I have a. A few questions and an interesting point. So let's start with the interesting point. Ruaka was one we didn't really talk about too much because her present really her presence wasn't really felt too much in this match. She was pretty much on the outside, running patrol around the ring and keeping everybody kind of down. Um, I noticed I noticed in the last time that Dump was a part of this little evil alliance. Um, and I've noticed it this time. Rowaka seems very uncomfortable around Dump. Have you noticed that? When she gets closer to her, she's kind of like, mm. as she tries because, to physically keep Dump her. Dump is insane and she just hits everybody. That's why. <laughs> well, well, I mean, granted, she didn't assist her team too much in this one, but she also wasn't beating 
on her teammates either because they were very clearly marked. All of hate is in black. All of the Empress Nexus Venus are in bright colors. It's very obvious which which pinata to whack. Um, I, I noticed it last time as well, though, that that when Tora and Ruaka were in the ring with Dump in particular, Ruaka was always physically trying to keep away from her and just she seems very uncomfortable around her. She might be a, a hesitant worker with her. I don't know. Might be I, a, a reputation thing. Maybe she's not so nice to the young girls. It, again, as I'm watching Queen of Villains and learning more and more about Dump, she she not like she went out on went out went into business for herself on stuff. But there was points in her history where shit got kind of nuts, and she was she started people started hitting each other for real in stuff that she did. And this is from also from podcasts I've been listening to talking about her. So again, it's been a topic for wrestling fans with the show out. Um, but yeah, dude, I I don't know. Maybe she's just worried because again, there's history of her kind of being crazy in rings, and Rock is just worried mm-hmm. she's gonna get hit. It could be that, or it could just be a kid. Maybe she's just playing it up. Uh, as a character wise, that just to show her character is fearful of dump. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why anybody fears this woman. Kick her in the knee, she falls down. Kick her in the head, she's done. That would all be all you need. <laughs> Assault the elderly. That's all we need. Okay. <clears throat> uh, my first question is why did Waka take the pen? I thought we were past this, Okada of the non Kazutika kind. What the flying? Fruit cake of a fa la la and powdered sugar on Santa Claus's asshole was dead. The only answer I have to that is uh, Walker took the pin last time at the Halloween show last okay. year with Walker and Mina versus Dump and whoever the hell she was partnered with. I think it was Zap. Um, but you I, have I, no, I the know. obvious I young person in Riyadh. Oh, I am very much aware of that. I was I was thinking exactly the same thing. But I'm just saying, if maybe they're playing to the history that Waka got beat last time, she got beat this time. I don't know. Fuck I, your I history. Hate, I hated this match. I, Fuck I, your I, history. Because, yeah. like, yeah, there most of Empress Nexus Venus was not prevalent in this match unless they were getting their asses kicked. Like, Micah came in a couple times and got some shoulder blocks in, but was quickly thrown out by either Tora or Momo. We were also kind of running. Momo was another one who was very rarely in this one because she was busy running interference on the outside. It was very much almost like a oddly chaotic football game where people just kind of had their jobs and they kept, just kept doing it. And it it turned out to like I didn't I didn't enjoy this too much. My second question was kind of like similar to the statement you made earlier. It's like I get with her show being out in the series needing some kind of marketing and some kind of you know push to the the media this is a good way to market her and market the show because like immediately before this there was an advertisement for the show mm-hmm. my qu- a question again is why does she need to be physically in the right now she can do just as much damage and wreak just as much havoc on the outside of the ring without actively being a part of the in-ring action. Because then she can be running interference and hitting people off the apron with the, the kendo stick. I'd be annoyed about it, but well, I'd expect well, it a lot more. Can she really run, though? Well, like, it wouldn't be to... happening in the first 10 minutes of the match, that's for sure. No, but again, I, I, yeah, why it couldn't have been a five on five? You could have Zap in there as, as, hundred uh, percent representative. Zap can move. Zap can still can wrestle, and just maybe put Rian mm-hmm. on the outside or put, uh, like put one of the girls as as just a second for the team, and you can still 100%. get them involved and smack them around if you want to. You're gonna you're gonna pin walk anyway, ah. so Rian could have been on the outside getting whacked in the head as an outsider. Like again, it, mm. and I don't want to see it again. Yeah. But we're going to. I'm going to move on. We're going to move. We're moving on from this because I'm just okay. talking about this. So oh, oh, what we have to talk about what um, the oh. announcement that happened oh, yeah. or that's the things that happened in between there. That's why I brought us to this screen. Uh, so we're going to talk okay, about okay. these. But I don't have a graphic for them. Uh, they announced okay. the Goddess Tag League starts on October 26th. So yay, mm-hmm. more tournaments. Um, you have historic crossover on November 17th. 
mm-hmm. which is actually one of my friend's birthdays. Um, and then uh, Dream Queendom on December 29th. Mm-hmm. And then this is where they announced the match of Zack Sabre Jr. and Starlight Kid versus, or no, that's just Sabre Jr. Uh, El Desperado. And star like kid. I wrote ZSJ twice. I don't know why. Um, you don't know why either. I just, I just wanted ZSJ versus ZSJ. That would be a great match. Uh, so it is El Desperado and star like kid versus Micah and Zack Saber Jr. on the historic crossover show. I can't wait. This is gonna be awesome. I'm curious to see what like they come up with because Zack Saber Jr. is very creative. Always likes to come up with like little team names and stuff. You know, we saw Dangerous Techers with him and Tai Chi. I'm curious to see if he comes up with a name for him and Micah. And if he does, what would it be? What do you think and it would will, be? And will she come out wearing orange? Oh, she has to. I hope. I she so hope has she wears to. Oh, God, I, I hope that her. she wears her regular like gear and now with the fox and everything, and that it is more orange. Yes, and too. instead of red. Um, but what what do you think you would call it? Oh, I don't know. Right? What is Micah called now? She's still the Empress. I don't know. Uh technical Empress? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> hey, it works. I, I it don't last time we had the Battle of the Samurais versus the Aces. Yeah, I'm on. I can't remember if, if him and Julia had a name for the last I match they had. I don't think so. Mm. Yeah. But I'm then, excited for him, so. But then another big announcement comes in the form of a person <laughs> coming out to the ring. And it's a per and it's a person from New Japan. It's the great O'Con rolling out with holding mm. the King of Pro Wrestling Championship. It's KOPW title. Let's go, Empire, right here. Boom. That right there. That um, made me look like I have all forehead. <laughs> So he gets the mic. He says, "Bow down to me. Bow down before me, you fools of stardom. Tonight I have come to bestow upon you the greatest opportunity of my professional wrestling career. On November seventeenth, there will be a crossover show at Eddie on Arena Osaka, where I will fight the women of stardom for the KOPW." <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Um, this KOPW is the freest belt in the world. Men and women can fight for the belt. Rules are also free. For example, only one only women can use weapons. I distinctly remember men using weapons before, but I think in the men versus women part is what he's saying. Only women can use weapons. I mean, he can't mm-hmm. use a weapon on a woman, which, I, which I'm okay with. Mm-hmm. Um, women can form multiple tag teams, you know. So this could be like a four-on-one match, an 18-on-one match. It could be the entire stardom roster versus a great Ocon here. Mm-hmm. So hey, that being said, look, they got a little more. Hey, no matter what rules they use, there is no way I will lose to a mere woman. But still, anyone who wants to leave their name in history should step up. But you will experience the greatest pain and humiliation of your professional wrestling career. Wow, that was misogynistic. Uh, promo, but again, I don't believe that is Great Ocon's actual thoughts. I think it's just he's playing this douche-headed character here, and I look forward mm-hmm. to whatever he faces on this show. So that being said, as I was gonna gonna say, do, who do you think would be an intelligent person to put in that position? Susie, I have a few. I, I, I was gonna say I have I have five choices that I wrote down. Ooh, let's hear them. One of them was Suzu Suzuki because obviously deathmatch specialist. Mm-hmm. She'd have no problem taking on the great Ocon. She's taking on June Kasai. That's... <laughs> She's taking on the boogeyman. The great Ocon is not going to be a problem. Not at all. And the other another person I picked that I thought would be a really excellent choice was um stardom part-timer and former bestie of suzu suzuka risa sarah again she carries around that kendo stick it would be she'd be having her own weapon in tow one night reunion of prominence uh risa sarah suzuki and hiragi kurumi all teaming up to face the great okan in a three-on-one tag match oh my god do you know how amazing that would be i would freaking love that i would absolutely love that because like 
Could you imagine Hiragi doing a cannonball on the Great Okan? Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Um, number three, and that's Sukutora. Mm. I mean, obviously, could also bring along any member or combination of hate. You know, Konami would have no problem going toe to toe. Momo would probably have no problem going toe to toe. The combination of all three of them. Mm, that's a dangerous combo. Number four, Shuri. She might be tiny, but she is mighty. That woman is solid. Well, an expert martial artist in the Great Okan taking on a former MMA and martial artist in her own right in Suri would be an incredible match. And then maybe not Saki, but but having any other member of God's Eye in there could be beneficial for her. I wouldn't maybe put Lady C in there though. She's a little fragile right now with her back. Yeah, leave her alone. But my number five choice, and that was based off of um later events, Hazuki. Oh, with her new attitude, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or maybe a combination of stars. Could you imagine Kaguma doing her little stompy stompies on? Oh, that'd be so good. Or walking around before the ring, Kaguma, 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 and Kokan's just sitting there like. And he starts going, Oh, Khan, Oh, Khan, Oh, Khan. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> or just. Oh my god, dude! I cannot wait to see what this match is. At, 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 and I'm mm-hmm. hoping it's one of those ones where we don't actually get it announced. It's just mm-hmm. a great Ocon, it's a great Ocon open challenge, and we find out his opponent that night. Because if you really wanted to, you could put this at a certain point of the show. If you're still going to have them work another match, you could still do it. Like it, it, it really could. Mm-hmm. It'd, be, it'd be insanely interesting to me. Oh, uh-huh. I agree. If done properly. Okada of the non Kazuchika kind. Yes. Do not fuck this up. Yeah. So moving on, we go back to the show, and it's Hazuki taking on Starlight Kid. This match was so good. Mm-hmm. Starlight Kid just attacks her before the bell with a drop kick. They start brawling to the floor. They're brawling all over the floor. Whip, they're whipping each other into the chairs, tossing each other around by the hair. Uh, dude, it's, it's getting nuts. Like these two are just smacking every. Uh, Starlight Kid does the face wash and running boot to Hazuki back in the ring at one point. Uh, she dra- and uh, she dragon screws the knee through out of the ropes, like just crazy stuff. Hazuki does fight back and get her gets her face face wash and running boot to Starlight Kid. Uh, these two are just beating the ever living piss out of each other. Um, working the submissions throughout the match with the cross face for Hazuki and that stretch muffler for uh so the kid um it's like i found in this match early on star that kid really seemed like the one that was working heel like she seemed to be working very heelish early on you know what i mean like it just i felt both of them were but i i see what you're getting there the attitude was definitely not what we are used to with her so, joining neo genesis so and even tom was even making comments about it that she, you're maybe seeing mm-hmm. a little bit of old star like kid coming out here, but then Hazuki, mm-hmm. right after I wrote that, Hazuki gets her in the ropes, uh, she DDTs her on the apron, and this is where she starts ripping at the mask star like kid. And this is where, mm-hmm. oh, my, oh, Hazuki's going heel now, and the crowd is booing, and she literally, it, it's a complete shift in this match. Hazuki is now just mm-hmm. rocking skull to skull, headbutts, she's doing everything like evil that she can possibly do um so like a kid gets uh they, they're fighting so the kid dodges a pump kick at one point gets that slice bread number two she gets another dragon screw she gets a stretch muffler into the black tiger leg killer uh which is where she pulls back on the arm while in the stretch muffler but as does mm-hmm. get a hand on the ropes again they keep going back and forth um uh, uh, so the kid uh, gets a spinning frog splash for two she goes back up goes to the moon salt but as you get in the knees up and gets a two fighting back and forth uh they end up going back to the floor uh or sorry they they're not they on the floor yet uh they start they they're going back and forth uh the big suplex is reversed to a big german by, by hazuki uh she falls with this pump kick uh and then just pump kicking each other 
Uh, the suplex uh, gets her first, and then it just it's it's crazy. And then Starlight Kid just gets a victory roll out of nowhere, and she picks up the win. And you're like, oh, okay. And Hazuki's having none of this. And she just goes after that kid. Uh, she she they fight out to the floor. Azuki hits her with a headbutt. Rolls Starlight Kid in, and she gets scissors. And I'm like, no, please don't cut her. I'm thinking blood at this point. I'm like, you don't don't do this. this do not do not. Well, I knew exactly what she was going for. They they don't do that here. Yeah, I was I was very scared because then Sigatora is crazy. And she does crazy things, so I was scared that Azuki got influenced. And but then she goes and starts cutting the mask of Starlight Kid and yanks it off her head, and she just like immediately covers up because pulling the mask off a mask wrestler is, unless you're El Desperado, is very sacred. Mm-hmm. Despy's wrestled with his face out multiple times with his mm-hmm. brass ripped off. Um, and yeah, dude, she hit the vertical or actually before she cut the mask off, she hit a vertical drop brain buster and she cut the mask off and takes it. She's holding it in the hair like a trophy. It just mm-hmm. it it was just evil. Just yeah, and we actually evil. saw Miwi Misaki hop in there really quick and actually pull off her shirt to cover up Starlight Kid's face. Yeah. Um, luckily that her hair is very long. So when the mask was removed, she was able to to cover up and use the hair to kind of hide herself mm. pretty easily. But yeah, um, I don't have it. Like you mentioned pretty much everything that I had, had also written down, um, except for like the mask, att- like the attack and mask removal of Zuki afterwards was definitely uncalled for. Um and and something that I, I mean, I've been speaking to it for the last number of months when it's come to stars. Are we witnessing a downward darkness spiral of this faction? Because again, we we have one very clear cut heel faction in this company in hate. Everybody else is pretty face it daisy. Stars is starting to look a little dark with the attitude of Hazuki, with the attitude of Miami Watani. You know, both these women are starting to get to a savage level. But we also saw some confusion of the other stars members in Hazuki's attitude, where Kaguma was even standing there, like, what are you doing outside afterwards? So Maybe stars are not all on the same page with this little downward spiral because Momo's still wrestling pretty facey. We haven't seen any heel tendencies out of her yet. And Ida is also still wrestling pretty straight and narrow. But Hanan also starting to go down that path with Mayu and Hazuki. Could we be seeing a fracture? What do you think, Andre? Yeah, I could see it because, like, even in the, like, I didn't see it as much from Hanan and Mayu tonight because I think it was just so overblown with Hazuki. We didn't, you didn't see, I didn't Agreed. see it as much tonight, but yeah. you've seen it in the past of those who have gotten pretty, like, mean about things and Hazuki mm-hmm. just going off the rail. Again, they've been telling a really great story with Hazuki with her coming out in the hoodie and just being all depressed and down. And this is her, mm-hmm. her like, it's her snapping. Right, they finally getting mm-hmm. to a, a point in snapping because, like, they were talking about it on commentary. She really needs this win here. She really needs to get back on track, and her losing made her finally snap. And this is that double crazy that we. This is the crazy out of the Fukuoka double crazy that we get. Um, mm-hmm. So we're seeing it, and yeah, just crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm very curious to see where they take her with this again. Okada, the non Kazushika kind. Don't fuck this up. This could be really, really good if done properly and if told properly. We could see a really amazing feud where we solidify Starlight Kid as a top face again and we solidify Hazuki as maybe a top heel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Kid does get the mic afterwards. He says, wait a minute. Even though I look like this, I can't just back down like this. Uh, Hazuki, she's a dangerous girl, but isn't this the real Hazuki? Because Hazuki is a former member of Oedo Tai before she mm-hmm. before she left uh, for her. She took a retirement there for like a year. So she mm-hmm. was a member of Oedo Tai, so she has some darkness in her. Um, I can't mm-hmm. see straight ahead, sorry, but I hope you find a good opponent to have this kind of match with, which I don't understand. Well, it doesn't change the fact that I hate you. 
but you know uh, the only one who won today is star like kid uh there's no exaggeration to say that i am mentally ready to take on the wonder in earnest uh i'd, I'd like to aim for it from here so please support starlight kid everyone i'm sorry i'm like this because she has this towel over her head while she's talking so <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah yeah no yeah, let's we'll just see on that one now so we'll just kind of see, we'll have to wait and see how it goes yeah so we move over to a four-way tag match, which is kind of a. It's I don't I don't even think it's a first shot. It's not even first shot at the titles, but yeah, uh, maybe. But it's odd teams except for one or two of the teams are are normalish teams. The other two teams are very odd because uh, you have Stars and Anon and They are team. They are team. They were New Blood champions together. Then you have Aya Sakura and Seriano. Odd. Uh, pairing from Cosmic Angels. Uh, you have Lady C and Siri, which is, again, is an odd pairing from uh, God's Eye, but Siri doesn't really have an established partner over there. I, mean, I guess Sasaki is, but I guess she's Saki, but Saki wasn't on the show for some weird-ass reason. Uh, and then you have Neo Genesis's uh, Azumi, or a- Azumi and the ultimate shooting star, May Sarah. I saw that on her graphic. She's the ultimate shooting star. I didn't realize Saki wasn't on the show. I didn't notice she was missing. Yeah, me either. Until I, until right now, I didn't realize it. I'm like, oh yeah, it didn't bother me. Well, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I didn't really notice either. Yeah, so uh, I need to talk um, about Aya Sakura's gear here. It looked great. It, it's it's oh, yeah. it, it really suits her. I agree. I agree. It's the best gear she's had so far, and it matches the kind of aesthetic as Cosmic Angels. Whereas before it kind of was like a, an odd little schoolgirl, and with these other kind of sparkling, even Kurara's gear matched a lot better. Mm. That well, like her old gear matched a lot better than I Kurara's, but yeah, no, the new gear was really, really good. And then, okay, did, have I just not noticed? Has Lady C been wrestling with chaps for the for this long while? Because like she I was, didn't yeah. notice them until today. No, she has. That's her new gear. Yeah, aren't isn't, aren't they cool though? I, oh, I liked them. I just I never noticed it. That's the <laughs> part. It's okay. Yeah. So we get another match. It's an eight way suplex at one point, and Siri has to get out of it and starts kicking all of her opponents in the bum, so that uh, Lady C, May, Sarah, and as you me can make the suplex on the other four. I mean, brilliant because you got the team of the small smaller people, and then. Lady C taking on the rest of the members in the match. You know, so they kind of needed the little boost. Yeah. He, uh, a little pick in the buck, if you will. Yeah, C gets that big swing on uh, May Sarah. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, he's just double chopping everybody. She's on such a roll, she ends up double chopping Ganon. I was like, Yeah, oh! that was funny. <laughs> and that's where her Hanan's heel turn started. <laughs> Yeah, Hanan was not happy with that. Uh, Ida and C are just trading jobs at one point, and, and Azumi coming in with drop kicks, taking them out. Again, really mm-hmm. good. Like a lot of great uh, technical royal round between uh, Anu and Azumi it looked really good. Uh, mm-hmm. There was a Tower of Doom spot with uh, C power bombing Ida, who is double suplexing Azumi and Sari Anu off the top. Um, yeah, just a lot to create. Just everybody just coming in and out, attacking, in and out, attacking. Um, the end of this, uh, uh, C hits a flapjack to Aya Sakura, and, and Siri hits that running knee to the head. She gets to, she follows it up, picking her up, Emerald Flosion for the win. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I also, there was what, just to add, you pretty much said everything I, I did except for one thing, so that's good. Um, there was that one little point where Isaac Sakurai and um, Asuri were in there, and they were just showing off their uh, martial arts skills back and forth. It was a fun little point in the match because it was completely different from the rest of the the wrestling that was happening in there, and just letting them have that little show off, especially with that uh, Aya's kicks. Holy man, are her high kicks just so? They're so pretty, like they're so. They look so nice. Um, but yeah, otherwise, this was just a really, really fun, like surprisingly organized, cha- organizingly chaotic match because it wasn't chaotic in a na- negative way. 
Mm-hmm. I was going to say nasty way. That could be taken as a good term here, couldn't it? Um, yeah. yeah. It was a fun, fun little match. It was. I also think appropriately placed in the card. Yeah, I think so. It kind of gave us a break in a way because it just let the chaos mm-hmm. reign while we kind of reset for the final three matches. Mm-hmm. And we move forward to my personal favorite match on this show. It's Natsu Poi versus Tekla. So let's start out pre-match the video. These two, <laughs> go into history of these two from when they were in DDM together. And Natsu Poi leaving DDM uh, for uh, Cosmic Angels and breaking Tekla's heart. Mm-hmm. Tekla crying there. And Tekla's just like her, her idol killer moniker that she's adopted and going after Natsu Poi now and, and just being so vicious and then having uh, her friend Clark Connors come in and spear the living hell out of Nancy boy. I was, su- I was surprised that he wasn't there, but then I realized, Oh wait, they they had a house show on this day. They had, he was working a house show <laughs> in, on the same day. So he's why he yeah. wasn't. I feel like character wise, he should have been there in a way. Uh, if he was available, he, I think he would have been there as just to sell, help sell it. But yeah, mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. It, I love the, the, the story they told leading into this. Mm-hmm. I agree. And I then, agree. It was such an intense and just tear jerking story that just really did tug at your heartstrings because it was a breakdown and, and dissolution of a friendship, essentially. And like arguably like friendship breakups are rougher than relationship breakups because this person is someone that you've trusted more than than anything. Right. So, mm-hmm. yeah, take us into it, man. Okay, so let's get into the entrances. Beckla's entrance, mm-hmm. that red jacket. When she got in the ring, she looked like she had a trail on, on there. It was attached to her arm. And when she stood up and lifted her arms out to the side. The chains. The chain, the chains holding to this flag. And it pulls it up, opening up a hate flag behind her. I loved it. The look was perfection. Yes. She was an, the literal representation of that faction that night. Mm-hmm. Even though the captain was in a what was supposed to be, I think, a more important match um, for them anyway, um, it turned out to to beat Thecla this night. And boy, who does she look so good? That gear, so good. And and, and nothing taken away. Nats boys and just gear look great. Great, I love that crown thing she was wearing on her head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like the tiara thing, whatever it was, whatever it was. I really liked. That. I thought it was really mm-hmm. good. Again, she had mm-hmm. great entrance gear too, and they they get right in each other's faces uh, before they even for the introductions, and then they go in mm-hmm. uh, into each other's face, it's stare down to start the match, and Thecla just bang headbutt, and this and Nat is pissed, and they just start fighting. They go right, to the, it's just crazy, and then Nat sends Thecla to the floor, hits a high cross, and that's just the start of this match. Um, mm-hmm. Thecla Thec- uh, Thec- gets a baseball bat at one point with the ref distracted and hits her with it. Uh, just it, they start going back where the Thecla gets a sharpshooter and she's like pulling at Nat's hair and she's in the sharpshooter. Uh, mm-hmm. these, these two were just doing everything here. They were just fighting around. Thecla getting her, bringing her spiked mask in that she has and like suplexing Nat's point under the spiked mask. Uh, just she was trying to hit her with it at points. Yeah. So crazy. Yeah. Uh, like, Nasty Point goes to the top. Hate attacks her at one point. Cosmic Angels, though, make the save, which I was like, okay, I like this. I like this. She has, her team's there to save her. Uh, Nat misses a splash uh, off the apron to the floor, and Nat gets run into the pose. Thecla does end up hitting Nasty Point with the title belt. Um, she gets a cross face in the ring, and she, like, starts hooking the hooking them, like, fish hooking the mouth. I'm like, oh, my God. Gross. <laughs> Don't you put it in your mouth. No, don't you put it in somebody else's mouth. Don't you put it in somebody else's mouth. Don't you put it in somebody else's mouth. (laughs) Don't stick it in someone else's face. Don't stick it in someone else's face. (laughs) That's so funny because it just sounds like the song, but the song tripping down the stairs. That's what I'm trying to do here. Again, these two going back and forth were just incredible matches. The super kicks, the strikes, everything was just so good. Um, towards I'm gonna go jump, kind of jump to the end here. Uh, 
Seckle goes to hit. Uh, so Natsboy scores a super kick into a jackknife pin for two. Then Seckle avoids another kick and hits an eight six seven driver. The Rich King finished mm-hmm. double underhook twisting twisting slam. She hit an eight six seven driver. I uh, think it goes for the dead for like her double underhook version of Deadfall, but she mm-hmm. gets up for two. Uh, she gets a case. The case gets taken away. Uh, Natsupoy scores, gets him some like attacking. Natsupoy hits a German, kicks more German. She hits an SOS for two. Uh, she goes to the top, uh, but and you can see hate trying to climb up to attack her, but uh, Cosmic Angels are like holding them back. It was a beautiful visual. Uh, Natsupoy hits a ferial splash, only gets two. And this is where she stands up, like cycles on her knees. She's like begging her to not hit her. And she's like, ah, 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 and she just hits a head kick. Hits that spinning fisherman neck breaker. She goes back to the top. Ferial splash goes back up. One more ferial splash. And Natsupoy retains the wonder of stardom championship. And what was an incredible match. Yeah. I honestly do wish that Tekla had won this one, though. I felt that they could have perpetuated the story a little bit more. Maybe not right away, but maybe revisit it in, in the new year. Or maybe... Like, you know, or something. Yeah, yeah, because, like, since she started the idol killer thing, this is the second kind of loss she's taken in this. That, um, and I think that it it's going to start to do what exactly what it did to Natsuki Tora. Start to slow that momentum. We can't have that. That connection with NJPW and the War Dogs, especially going into crossover, very, very important day right now. We need to solidify that. So, yeah, I would have liked to see Thecla win this just because I feel it would have made sense with that, but also made sense going in with the crossover and potentially Queen, though. But um, the match itself was just... this It's so well told. And then with the addition of, as you've mentioned, the teams on the outside, adding to the story, it was perfect. Perfect storytelling. Tony Khan. You're affiliated with these guys. That's the kind of storytelling we need. Jason, yep. thank you. So, uh, next we get the mic after the match. Tackle, tackle. No matter who you bring with you, whether it's a man or woman, I will never run away from you. Don't underestimate me. Two years ago, something I did hurt you. You were sad, right? The other day, Tekla made me feel the same sadness. Uh, I was, I, I was sad too, but maybe it was even worse than what, I don't understand this part. I, I chose Cosmic Angels with strong feelings. Tekla, I Tekla joined Hate with equally strong feelings, right? And Tekla's kind of smiling. She gets the microphone. She goes, "So summary, fuck you," and she spits at her and leaves. As she's leaving, she goes, "Nessie boy, see you later, bye," and leaves. And just, just, and just, it was perfect. So, mm-hmm. way then goes into her sign off. Bullshit. I really don't need it's all the I I'm a I'm a champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. So yeah. Bye boy. And then the bye boy. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There I mean not much to add to that. I I, I still I, I gained so much more just adoration for Thecla in this match. Because mm-hmm. just the way she was able to convey such emotion into everything she did and how Natsupoi was able to reciprocate. It was just such a perfect storytelling match. Loved it. Yep. Yep. Incredible match. So mm-hmm. the main event of the evening is for the IWGP Women's Championship. It's Mayu Iwatani defending against Timeless Tony Storm. Again, this is Timeless Tony Storm, not Tony Storm from years ago, from six years ago, who Won the title in just over two minutes from Mayu Itani because Mayu Itani got hurt in their World, World, of, World of Stardom title match. Um, Azumi is on the is on the Japanese booth. I love the little posing you're doing. It's great. <laughs> I'm uh, Az- trying to remember what she does. Uh, Azumi on the Japanese booth, and I think this is where Waka joined the English commentary team. Correct. Yeah, so I was at the point with watching. It was adorable. <laughs> Uh, he was so heckin' adorable, man. Well, let us know what she says. Uh, cla- just classic wrestling, working the headlock early on. A lot of good, like, we're just working back and forth. It seemed it, like it seemed like they had a bit of a 
like it's a we can rivalry, but both people like nobody's a bad guy in in this. Like Mayu mm. did again. Mayu, well, she has been kind of getting a little mean about stuff. She didn't seem to be that here, even though this is somebody mm. who should have that for. And Mayu gets this beautiful rocket kick that running that running jump like it's like Daniel Bryan's running knee, but it's a running boot instead. Mm -hmm. uh, jump up there with the boot, and then she follows it with a crucifix bomb, and Tony goes rolling out of the ring, and she gets a beautiful tope suicida here. Ah, oh, so good, so good, mm -hmm. so, good. so good, like a rocket, like a bushy rocket. Yeah, oh, very much so. Again, these two just it just incredible match. I actually didn't take a lot of notes on this one because I was just enjoying it so much. Um, Mayu missing a moonsault, but it comes back with a sling blade and goes up, hits the moonsault, only gets two. The cradle dragon suplex gets reversed into uh, by Tony into a German, falls up with a pile driver. She then hits three, or then she hits, uh, she gets got with another pile driver, and then three more pile drivers or storm, I think it's storm zeros, but Mayu kicks out at two. I'm like, holy shit, this, this woman's neck is like made of steel i guess um tony gets i'm assuming she wears the hood to hide the tape yeah so tony gets <laughs> lined up in the court seat in the corner she runs for that hip attack but it is missed mayu gets uh she like she she's in the corner she jumps she and then she's end up in the corner and as tony runs in she pops up onto her shoulders poison rana and mayu iwatani is still your IWGP Women's Champion. I really thought Tony was winning this, but again, really good match. Mm -hmm. Again, like, I think we mentioned it a number of times across a number of different shows. Um, it would have been a smart move, I think, because like Mayu has been defending this belt, but in comparison to the noise that the has been made with the NJPW um the strong, strong women's championship mm -hmm. it, it's it's not been as heavily marketed or or kind of put out there as much or as made to seem as important as the strong women's championship so with mercedes monet holding it i thought it would have been a good idea to try to bring some more attention to the japanese and um like wrestling in particular to to have tony have that belt that being said though it still creates the opportunity people know who mayu iwatani is so having her defend it continually going forward i think is a, is a smart idea because also they're still trying i think in some degree to bank off the fact that she did just have that documentary movie come out there earlier so i right. think they're still trying to also Runaway Wrestler, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think it's still a good idea to have it on her for that reason, being that they still um, try to associate that a little bit more. I think now would be a good time to kind of remind people now that it's been a little quiet for a few months, um, remind people that, that that did come out and that you can rent it or where you can check it out, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely would have liked to see Tony have won this one. Um, do want to shout out her outfit. I loved her outfit in this one, the black polka dot, um, kind of very similar to what she has on in the the photograph here, the halter style, kind of pinup rockabilly, um, I guess vintage bathing suit, one piece bathing suit. I love that style in general, but to see it in professional wrestling again has just been like a privilege and a treat yeah so even tani gets the mic uh she says corku and ho oh i made a mistake and she broke her trophy that she was presented she literally broke the yeah it was really funny he says good evening everybody <laughs> tony storm i was able to get my revenge after six years six years ago i lost the belt in two minutes and 30 seconds due to an injury and today she places her hand on the this is where she places her hand on the trophy and it breaks it was i just laughed so hard uh, yeah. Today, my Tony won. I'm glad I was able to compete with Tony Storm for the IWGP Women's Championship today. Uh, thank you, Tony. Everyone in Japan or everyone around the world respects you. I want to fight you again and again. Maybe I won today by chance, but please tell me, no, that's not true. And she kind of laughs. Uh, she says, I I'll aim to be better than you with my own abilities, so I'll be waiting for you anytime, anywhere, tomorrow. 
Thank you so much. I'm so happy. And then Tony Storm gets the belt, or the, not the belt, the mic. She says, good evening. I'm sorry, Mayu-san. You're not a stupid bitch. You're a good bitch. And th- I could uh, just, uh, just, just, uh, you're an icon. I laughing at that. I was just like, oh my God. So good. You're an <laughs> icon. You're the best. Tony. You're the best IWGP champion. I respect you. Everyone in the universe thinks so. I'm leaving Japan tomorrow. Where I'm going, I don't know. I don't know. She's going to Mexico. But one thing I do know is that I love you. Thank you, Mayu-san. And then they hug. And she's going to Mexico. She uh, wrestles. Yeah. Uh, as a, uh, On October 11th, she's in uh, CML on Arena Mexico in the main event. Yeah. Fantastica. Fantastica. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I loved the little just calling. So you're not a stupid bitch. You're a good bitch. I was like, oh my God. I mean, there is a difference. <laughs> oh, God, I there so is a hard. difference. I laughed so hard at that. I did too. Oh. <laughs> I knew exactly what she was referring to. But yeah, it was a funny <laughs> like of all the things, Tony. I, I love this this character this side of tony storm that we have been seeing in this timeless kind of a persona of hers it's just been top notch top tier way to go yeah just absolute genius level work here Mm -hmm. so we move on main event of the evening it is tam nakano defending her world of stardom championship against the rightful champion suzu suzuki they stare down right face to face. Then they're wrestling early on. Lots of good uh, forearm trading. They do a snapmare train back and forth where they're both snap, just repeatedly snapmaring each other. I really like that. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, they do. They do just the kicks from Suzu are just lethal. But even Tam's kicks are pretty gosh darn solid. When she lands those kicks, mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to get kicked by mm-hmm. her. Um, Suzu, like, Half sets up a table on the outside at one point, like just like half. Mm-hmm. Set up. So it just, I was like, "What? It makes no sense. It makes no sense." But we did, uh, we did come into it later on. Uh, Tam gets that they're they're fighting on top. They fight on the outside. Susie gets a spear on the ring. Uh, in the ring, Tam fight. They get up to the top rope. Uh, Tam gets that hanging choke on the top rope and then lets Susie drop all the way to the floor. Uh, Tam hit, uh, mm-hmm. she gets up, she slips a bit, but then she hits that high cross to Susie Suzuki on the floor. Um, they fight around on the floor a bit. There's a German and a crucifix full Nelson, uh, in the, back in the ring. Uh, Susie catches a running knee on the apron and she gets a half Nelson, like that half, like her. She hooks in a half Nelson and then like spins him out and just tosses Tam down to the floor through that table set up on like an angle. Looked brutal to take that spot, but it was just like, oh. Did you hear what ended up happening? What? About Kurata? No. Oh, they were saying it on commentary. I guess when, when the table kind of got yeeted around there. Um, Kurara was a little too close. She got uh, cut in the face. She had to go to the back, get it taken care of, because she too close, a little too close. Yes, just stay away from that shit. So um, <laughs> she Suzu tosses Tam back in, and she brings a piece of the table in and just cracks her with it. It was so funny. So good, man. I cackled. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Suzu just uh, hitting uh, uh, multiple head kicks. Drops Tam, gets a two shot, a two count. Uh, she has a tequila shot, only gets two. Suzu gets to the top, but Tam right up on with her. Suzu slips out, comes back up, hits a top row of German, then follows it up with a rolling chaos theory in the ring. But again, only gets two. And I'm like, come on, that's our finish. Uh, Suzu climbs up, a Tam rises up, comes up, and backdrops Suzu Suzuki off the top. They start training kicks. Tam gets a dragon suplex. Uh, there's a bunch of reversals. Suzu hits a poison rana for two. Uh, Tam hits her, comes back with her backdrop suplex, then another and another, but only two. She picks her up, 
Violet Screwdriver is hit, but Suzu kicks out of that last possible millisecond. I'm like, oh, thank Christ. And then Ham just picks her up. Twilight Dream, which is that tiger suplex with the bridge. Ham Nakano, sadly, retains the one World of Stardom Championship. Oh, it's so I- hard. Because we love Tam so much, mm-hmm. but this title reign doesn't make sense. How do you lose, like you have the worst run in the tournament, every single match you lose, and you beat the world champion and the person who won every single match in the same tournament that you just lost? Mm-hmm. Make it make sense. There's no redemption angle here. There's been no story to it. It's just her suddenly winning. It It's not a good look. And then to have her going up against these dominant people who whooped her ass in the tournament, suddenly she's retaining. Why couldn't you do that in the tournament? It, it doesn't make sense. Um, I enjoyed this match, though. It's it's one of those matches where, again, like a few matches in this show where it was like, we loved the ride. It just the ending kind of didn't pan out the way it probably should have. Mm-hmm. That being said, what is this setting up? I don't know. Like, I can't even think. What is the Dream Queen to match? Like, what is it? I don't have an idea. Yeah, because there's not really, like, who could be, she already had a feud with Tora, she already fought Micah, she already fought Suzu. Is it, do we, are we going to start to see Shuri start to, to step up a little bit more? She's been pretty quiet the last couple of years. It's been a while since she's challenged for this belt. Could we see that? Could be. Could be Suri. I, I can't, I don't know. Is it Hazuki making her, her ride? Uh, is that the case? Because you're kind of a, a, I'd like to well, see Suz or Hazuki win that Wonder title first. Me too. Again, that's where I, I want to see her dominate first. Mm-hmm. Does Mina step up? Like, like, where do we go? Does Mina come back for Dream Queendom and say, hey, I'm coming at you. I want your title. You, you took mine last year. I'm coming for yours. Maybe that's Maybe. You know, I don't I don't know that I would personally love to see see fuck I would love to see Mina win that that red belt, but like yeah, but Mina is the Kenta of stardom. Yeah, she, keeps, she, she works so hard and then gets nothing from the company she's in, but has championships from other companies that actually see her value. Which check out on the weekend of not this it's not this weekend. Uh, the weekend of the 19th and 20th on both on Rev Pro. You can watch on the mm-hmm. 19th. You can watch the uh, the Rev Pro show on the on on the their their on demand channel, which Mina Shirakawa and multiple other New Japan people will be on that mm-hmm. Rev Pro show. So check that out. She will be defending the title there. Uh, and then on the 20th, also on Rev Pro on demand. If you want to watch it in English. It will. That's where uh, Royal Quest Four is being broadcast in English. It'll be in Japanese on New Japan World. So check. So if you're looking for some Mina love, check that out. Yes. And she's yes. on both shows, and Azumi's Azumi's on both shows, I think, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you are correct. So post match, uh, Nat Tam says, "Oh, oh, you damn gal, uh, you're you're so you're seriously crazy." You're hateful, insane, ridiculously strong, brimming with talent, young, a genius. You have a bright future. So you're not the kind of woman who's going to let her chance get ruined by the woman she hates the most. I thought it was Reese Sarah. Uh, I'll always accept your challenge, no matter how many times. So come and challenge me again. Susan then says, I lost. I'll admit it. But your slap damaged my eardrum, so I couldn't hear anything you just said. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I didn't hear a word, but I can imagine that you must have said with that hateful look on your face. Oh, uh, Tam, I'm looking forward to chapter two. And then Suzu Suzuki puts out her hand to Tam, and Tam goes to shake, and she's just like, 
<laughs> her off and, and walks away. I loved it. I loved it so much. And then Tam got her bike back, did her whole. Oh, man, 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 no, but you got to tell the rest of the reaction from Tam because she acted oh. like a child. She was just like, oh, uh. But then when the camera panned back to her, you saw her flip off Suzuki back. She did. She did. She, she did. just hit it. She censored herself. Yeah. But she, she was like, so I, I like, yeah, she did that. And then she saw the camera and, hmm. Yeah. I didn't do that. I'm still cute. And then, then we get into the tam hole. I'm, I'm pretty. I'm cute. Bullshit speech. And ends with fall beyond the tam road that sparkles in the universe. Believe in tam. Thank you. And that's a, and yeah. You're turning on tam. I, I just, I, it, it's exactly the same speech from her, and that's what the end of every match they do when they do a speech. I don't. Even it's read. true. They have their little signature thing that they say. Yeah, I don't need to read it every single time. Yeah. <laughs> Andre's getting spicy. Incredible show, though. Incredible show. Two-thirds spicy. Two-thirds of the spice. <laughs> the other third is just sweet. Uh, whatever helps. Whatever helps. <laughs> Take us into the outro, sir. Well, we have we are going to get out of here. We've been here for an hour and twenty one minutes already, so we're going to get out of here because we have to go record something else. So, um, I want to thank all y'all <laughs> yeah. for joining us here. We thank you so very much for all the great support that you have given us here at Andre Melville Wrestling Talk. Also over on A Plus Production, thank you so very much. Uh, if you want to hear us in audio form, A Plus Productions. Dot com. Uh, go over there. We have three feeds, the sports feed, the entertainment feed, and the wrestling feed where you can find me and Mel all talking Jap all these Japanese wrestling uh, stuff that we talk about. Check that out over there. Uh, they, and uh, if you want to see us in video form, you can watch us on the mobile wrestling talk. Backbreaker video. Thank you so very much. Please, if you're watching on those, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Don't forget to share us out to your friends, family, and all the wonderful, wonderful people that you know in this world. Um, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be alerted every time we drop a new video. Get your mask. Ding dong. You can find me on the X at that Canada guy, TikTok, Instagram, and threads at that Canada. You can find me on Facebook at Andre Melville Russ Talk and there, YouTube page, YouTube.com, so at Andre Melville Russ Talk. As I said, you can check us over a, a plus productions on Facebook. Join the Facebook page, uh, join in with all the great co ch chat with all the great fans over there, and a plus productions dot com to get your links to our podcast check out twitch.tv slash our local establishment and youtube.com slash at our local establishment to check me out doing marvel talk which i was on this past wednesday even though i wasn't supposed to be there that day because we had plans but plans fell through so i joined in the show with four of us there's four of us we had the doc uh from br sports we had doc from br sports we had Bobby Money Months, and we have myself and Old Ed talking Agatha on episode five. I will not be part of next week's episode because I will be at Bowling for Soup, which Ed is very jealous about. And I keep rubbing, and I'm going to keep rubbing it in his face. Uh, <laughs> screw Ed. <laughs> I love so you, buddy. Rude. I love you, buddy. So you can check me out. So you can Where's check out Marvel Talk. You can check out the Me Less Marvel Talk next week featuring Ed and whoever he finds to help him make the show, try to make the show better without me, but it's not the same without me. Simple as that. Where's your bestie necklace? There it is. There you go. I have okay. it. Don't worry. He, he, didn't wear <laughs> his, he didn't wear his on the last show, but I did. Uh, you can also check us out over, as I said before, youtube.com at Backbreaker Video, where you can find all the wrestling content Mike has over there. You can find him live over at twitch.tv slash Mike the Rep every Wednesday, Saturday, and pay per view Saturday or Sunday, depending on which day that AEW puts a pay per view on, watching all the AEW watch along. He'll be there this weekend on Saturday night for Wrestle Dream live on his Twitch channel. So go over there, hang out with him as he watches Wrestle Dream, and you can chat with him as you watch along with it. I will be doing that after I get home from what I'm doing that afternoon. 
And you can also find all the replays of that over at youtube.com slash at backbreaker underscore gaming where he has all this great gaming content from his Twitch channel that features him, Mr. PJC, this little guy right here, this wee little dude, Rick Jules, right over here. And therefore, we can guest Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. Not JJ Spade, Kayla J. Just, I'm just, how do you make a K with your fingers? What the? I'm gonna make a K to go with the J. I don't, I don't know how. Try to make a K. That is evident. <laughs> I can make an E, but I can't make a K. Goodness, we love Kayla J. Melbourne, no, where can they find you? Uh, if you're wanting to follow a mobile, you can follow her on the X thing. I call it Smellball. You can follow her on everything else. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, M Blue, Sky, and Melbourne Collins. You can also find me on our local establishments programming Japanese wrestling update with this guy every Friday. It'd <laughs> be a mountain time. Whew, unless it's not. And then we'll let you know on social media. Tomorrow will be a pre-recorded episode as we are literally going to be recording it. Well, I guess today. Today is going to be a pre-recorded episode because we're going to be attending the RCW Thanksgiving Thunder Show. Where we're going to see the love of my life, Mitch Clark. Can't see my heart. There you go. Love of my life, Mitch Clark. Taking on Pride. Pride. And the Raz yeah. versus JJ Spade, and they're returning. Dean Richter. Hello. Sorry. We did it. And fisting. <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> Touching tips and raising fists. And raising. Fists. Hey, thank you for our catchphrase for the night. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be attending RCW. So, as we mentioned, Japanese Wrestling Up Staple, we pre recorded airing at 8 p.m. Mountain Dead. You can also find me on Astro Pizarro's YouTube channel where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. She's live. That's a blessing in this crazy, crazy cookie and weather. She has power, which a lot and of she has power. Before. Pray for those people. Very, very lucky. So, we will hopefully be having an episode coming out very, very soon. Stay tuned to our social to find out when that is coming out. Andre. Right. I forgot. If you wanted to watch Stardom, <laughs> there will be a link in the description box below. It is stardom-world.com. It is 999 yen and approximately... What? Why are you shaking your head? Ah. It's... Shadow Sean Spears. <laughs> I still have that shirt. I should wear it more often. Anywho, it is actually closer to 10 Canadian now with the exchange. It's still a great price to watch some amazing wrestling. You can not only watch the show that we talked about today, you can go back into the archive, which Walker Stewart told us is going to soon have some English commentary. So... Make sure you keep checking back to see when that's going on. Otherwise, you can listen to the excitable nature of their Japanese commentary crew. Believe me, it is a treat to listen to. Andre, my trusted friend and colleague, do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? I just want to say thank y'all. I appreciate y'all all so very, very much. That's it? I already did the sign off, right? Okay, so, okay. Of course. <laughs> And that being said, I am your Melba. Over there is a try. We will see you next time. Mm -hmm.